welcome to the Artist Detective, where we investigate the lives and art of renowned artists like me. I am Rembrandt Van Rijn, the well-known, or shall we say, world-renowned painter who is known as a Dutch master from the 1600s. When we think of the Renaissance, there is usually one artist who comes to mind and he is considered by many people to be the greatest artist who ever lived. I find that a bit disappointing, but I guess I am so famous too that people only call me by my first name. This greatest artist is from Italy and he is so famous that he only goes by one name. Let me introduce Michelangelo. Ciao, I'm Michelangelo di Lodovico Buonarroti Simoni. Most people call me by my first name, and so can you. Michelangelo, say it! Michelangelo! Have you heard of me? I should think so. I am considered by many people to be the greatest artist who ever lived. I think I already told them that. You know, I am famous too for my use of lights and expressions and my wonderful portraits. See, that may be so, but you did not paint the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, or sculpt David, or the Pietà. Oh, but I am getting ahead of myself. You see, I was born and grew up near Firenze, Italia, or as you say, Florence, Italy, which by now I hope you know was the center of Renaissance art. See, I, Giotto di Bondone, am also from Florence. I started the Italian Renaissance art era with my frescoes of realistic, three-dimensional paintings of people who even showed expression and emotion rather than the flat, emotionless, Byzantine art of the early church. I, Fra Angelico, also served as a friar or monk in the Friary of San Marcos in Florence, Italia where I painted frescoes of Bible scenes on walls of monks' cells or as altars for chapels. You might notice my use of bright colors and real gold leaf for things like halos in my paintings. I humbly desire to honor and illustrate the acts of Christ. See, we in Italy have a lot going on artistically in the 1400s and 1500s. I, Lorenzo Ghiberti, spent 50 years creating Bible scenes from bronze-covered carvings for the doors of the Baptistery of San Giovanni in Florence. Ah, see the doors about which I said. They are worthy to stand at the gates of paradise. See, with Florence being the center of Italian Renaissance art, at the time you could simply walk through the streets and see things like Giotto's and Angelico's paintings on the church walls or the sculptures of Ghiberti on the doors of his baptistery. People at this time were interested in architecture, painting, poetry, and sculpture, and I am good at all of these. And I grew up with a family of stone cutters since my parents couldn't take care of me, which may be where I got my love for cutting stones into sculpture. You see, I love sculpture. I, Albrecht Dürer, the German Renaissance artist, also love wood cutting and printing. So when I was 16, I studied at a school for sculptors started by a wealthy and powerful man, Lorenzo de' Medici, who became one of my patrons. A patron is someone who pays you to create art. So I had another patron from Rome who paid me to make a sculpture of Mary holding the crucified Jesus. It is called the Pietà. Everyone who saw it was amazed. It is now in St. Peter's Church in Vatican City in Rome. You know, where the Pope lives. Another one of my famous sculptures is of David when he is getting ready to fight Goliath. I made it for the city of Florence, and it shows that the people of Florence thought of themselves as brave, strong, clever, and ready to defend their city. 
These statues gave me the opportunity to make the human body realistic. For the human body, as God's great creation, is the most important subject that an artist can paint or sculpt. I, El Greco, also painted the human figure and biblical scenes. Having studied Byzantine art first, though, I prefer to make my people appear stretched out or elongated. I'm not sure if you know, but I thought I could improve on your painting of the Last Judgment, which is on the altar of the Sistine Chapel, which made people very angry. But tell us more about your work at the Sistine Chapel. See, I painted the altar of the Sistine Chapel with a scene of the Last Judgment. You thought you could improve it? That's bold of you, for I am considered to be the greatest artist who ever lived. Well, Pope Julius II invited me to Rome to carve some sculptures for him. But then he changed his mind and asked me to paint the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. I was not happy about this. I love sculpture more than painting. So I argued a lot with the Pope. I had to paint on wet plaster, a style called fresco. It took me four years to paint the whole ceiling, but I am proud of the wonderful Bible scenes, such as the flood and the many prophets, like this one of the prophet Jonah. It was after this that I painted the altar with the scene of the Last Judgment. I also helped design plans for the dome on St. Peter's Basilica, which is the large cathedral at the Vatican. So, I have done some pretty fantastical art, no? And it is all for God's glory. Many believe, and I believe, that I have been designated for this work by God. In spite of my old age, I do not want to give it up. I work out of love for God, and I put all my hope in Him. Now, let's review about me. My name is Michelangelo, say it! Michelangelo! 1475 to 1564. 1475 to 1564. Italian Renaissance artist. Italian Renaissance artist. Known for sculpture and painting the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. Known for sculpture and painting the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. Considered to be the greatest artist who ever lived. Considered to be the greatest artist who ever lived. Arrivederci. Thank you for joining us on the Artist Detective. We look forward to seeing you next time when we investigate the lives and art of other great artists like me and Michelangelo. Remember that Ecclesiastes 3.11 says God has made everything beautiful in its time. Until next time, Rembrandt and the Artist Detective.